Yeah, yeah, what it do? It's your boy Bodine, and you are now tuned to another episode of STL vs. Everybody on Loco Radio, STL. Tonight, I have a special guest. I have, uh, you know what I'm saying, one of the, the legends in the city, one of the forefathers of this underground hip-hop shit here, one of the GOATs, uh, Tef Poe. Man, what's up, dog? What's good with it, man? I'm chilling, bro. Chilling. Finally made it to STL versus everybody. You feel hey, me? Hey, we we appreciate you for sliding so, through, bro. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. So, man, what's what's been up with you, man? You you are you have been a busy guy. Man, um, I don't even know where to start. I always got something going on. Um, well, you were you were just dropped the. Is it a book? I'm working wartime, on it. Right? Well, Wartime is a publication that I um, helped put together with uh, Black Men Build. Uh, where we circulated in seven cities mm -hmm. across the United States uh, in black communities, trying to talk to uh, not just black men, but just talk to black people about what's going on. It's kind of like the uh, uh, like the Green Book. That's what Rockwell called it. He called it the Green Book. Like you know, back in the day, um, black people who were uh, fresh off the plantation used to get the Green Book and look in it and see what was going on with black folks and where they could be and what was happening and what wasn't safe and you know, so, um, yeah, that's our that's that's what we're doing with that. You know what I'm saying? Then I got um, Boycott Times, mm -hmm. which I've just been named the um, executive director of that. Uh, it's a, um, a website um, that aims to be a uh, cultural hub for independent journalists, um, independent writers, freelancers. Is it more so um, a black journal, like journal journalist? It's really everybody. Okay. It's really everybody. Folks from all over the all over the world. Our focus is uh, more like international writers. Mm -hmm. um, so we got um, folks from like Kenya. My homegirl Christine Mungai. She was the uh, Neiman Fellow at Harvard, which is like this real prestigious um, journalist fellowship. Mm -hmm. And she came from Kenya, lived in the states for a while. Met her out there. Um, she she's uh, she she's one of our writers. Um, Cornell West is one of, on our advisory board, um, and my boy Mordecai Leone is the editor in chief. And my guy Danny started the whole situation. He's from um, Colombia, okay. from South America. Dope. And Boycott was already a, a clothing line that he launched over there, like mm -hmm. a streetwear line, and um, just figuring out ways to bring it to the United States and other pieces of the world outside of South America, and also just adding a um, a piece to it that explains um, some of the art that he puts on some of the clothing. So that's kind of what we use the the media component for to talk mm -hmm. about just different stuff going on in the world and how to connect people all over. That's dope. So, yeah. When when did it um, launch? It's recent, right? Yeah, um, we did a soft launch last week just to kind of work out the bugs in the site, mm -hmm. and um, we've been working on building this thing since. Since January, honestly. Okay. Um, we wanted to launch in June, but it just wasn't ready. And then we ended up working with this guy named Jay, who is a hell of a um, web designer. I just I don't even want to call him a web designer because um, he works alchemy with the with, with what he does <laughs> with the internet. He used to work for that Piff, one of the founders of that Piff in the beginning of it, and. Um, he brought that skill set over to boycott. So mm -hmm. uh, our website is not just like a blog, you know what I mean? Like um, it's an actual full sp spread newsroom where people can pitch stories. Um, and what makes it unique is that you don't have to be a professional writer to pitch. Mm -hmm. So like most people don't know that they they write every day. Right. Right. But you give free content to Mark Zuckerberg. You give free content to Jack on Twitter. You give him free content to Apple when you text. You know, you're using words. So the average person probably writes over 2,000 words a day and don't even know it. Mm. So just think if you were writing for your, for the sake of your own content. Right. And so that's what we're kind of doing, just galvanizing people to think of themselves as writers. That's dope. So so people can uh, sign up for this site. And then create their own. Yeah, post. so you can visit and just read what's on there, right? Like you can just go like how you go to New York Times. You can go to check it out. Like, uh, but we aim to be news that is real, news that's legit, and news that's nuanced. So it's like talking about stuff that people want to talk about, or talking about 
um, what's going on in the world from different perspectives, not just the mainstream news perspective, not just the story of the day perspective, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, if I were going to write a story, for example, about, like, King Von, um, rest in peace, I would write it from a perspective of, like, an honest perspective of the streets, mm -hmm. the rapper, like, me being a rapper, my language going to sound like what people in the streets talk like, yeah. uh, mixed with what I know as a professional journalist makes it journalism. Mm -hmm. So it's easier for people who talk like us to really process what's going on with it. And, you know, it's just t challenging the status quo of journalism. You mm -hmm. feel me? Like um, inviting citizen journalism to take the forefront of the conversation. But even if you don't want to write, you can visit the site, check it out, read what's going on. Um, we fund it primarily through the fashion line. So right now we're in uh, what we call the third eye cap. Okay. Uh, third eye is our logo, um, and we just uh, we just aim to be competitive, man. For real, uh, if you if they give me a year doing it, I think we'll be comparable to like Complex, but more like a um, comparable to Vice, but we'll be more like a. Um, a spot for people who are real and not tapped into the corporations to tell their stories. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You've been doing like write ups and just writing for like years though, because you've yeah. written for Riverfront Times and mm -hmm. you, you wrote for a couple other public uh, pub, publications. Mm -hmm. Um, so 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 yeah, man. I think like doing doing this, man. It suits you. And yeah, you're yeah. Working on a book too, right? Yeah, I've been working on a book for a while, man. Um. I probably got like five different versions of that mug written. <laughs> but uh, I swear to God, I'm trying to get it done this month. It's just I get pulled into so many different spaces that so like even while I'm doing all of this, I'm still trying to help build the local hub of Black Men Build, BNB, uh, just connecting brothers that wouldn't typically get involved in, in the movement into the movement. Just getting And, and I don't even like using the term movement because most people have a – a corny conceptualization of what the movement is, but just getting real dudes involved in real activities that can help us, you know what I'm saying, change some of our material con uh, conditions. Yeah. Um, and then outside of that, I'm always doing my music, you know what I'm saying? So all this for me works into one ecosystem of things, you know what I'm saying, where I can use all of my talents in different capacities, mm -hmm. you know? Just me coming up as an artist, you was like the first cat from the home team that I seen like first be on 106 besides big big wheel mm -hmm. uh and then just venture off into other things you know what I'm saying got you was in a source mm -hmm. uh you know what I'm saying you was doing write-ups for us yeah and you know what I'm saying uh yeah. the, the riverfront times you was like one of the first dudes to put on successful shows mm -hmm. for artists and you know what I'm saying, putting cats on the come up on them. Mm -hmm. You was jumping on, you know what I'm saying, cats albums, you was on mine, you was giving cats like shout outs, you was giving cats that nod, like you and Rocky. Yeah. Like y'all y'all really show people how to like You know, the thing is, bro, they they ain't make it easy for me and Rocky. You mm -hmm. feel me? Because we was two of the first cats that uh, said being able to rap matters. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of people, quite frankly, think they can rap. Mm -hmm. But when you start breaking down the components of what a real MC is, what's, what's actually dignified representation for the city. Um, and, I, and I don't judge people that don't make music like the way that I make music. I'm just saying in terms of the line that we was pushing, we wanted to push a line that made a Bodine a reality. We wanted a T Dubbo to be a reality. We wanted the next generation of MCs to be not 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 like us, but you know what I'm saying, people that were e emerging personalities, emerging talent that wasn't your typical run in the mill talent. That wasn't your typical run in the mill songwriting and, and stage performing and we did feel that we had an obligation and we still have an obligation to um always support the um the waves of talent that are coming through um and i i feel that way 
about it, not just in, in the scene that I come from. Um, I feel that way about it all over the map for what the city is and what the city could be. Mm -hmm. Do you do a, do you feel that, you know, people don't give you enough credit for like the work you put in here? <laughs> you know what? Younger me did. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Um, but I'm gonna be real with you, Bo, man. I, don't, I I live a good life, my dog. Yeah. Um, I ain't rich, but um, I've made something for myself that a lot of rappers who I saw coming up weren't able to do. Yeah. Um, if we were to compare this to a nuclear arms race or um, the Cold War between the Russia, Russia and the U.S. in terms of who gets to the moon first. Mm -hmm. Well, we won. So <laughs> I don't really have much to, you know what I'm saying? I don't have a, a lot of artists I feel develop this very narcissist type of disposition about the credit that they deserve. Mm -hmm. And when you really start breaking things down and, and, and settling into your position, into the ecosystem of what's going on musically. Um, you just learn to approach it differently. Mm -hmm. And I felt like, um, you know, a lot of people know me for a person who, I raged a lot of wars against a lot of different things. A lot of like, it, I went heads up against the radio. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I wanted a few people to go heads up with the radio and survive. Because mm -hmm. to be honest with you, I, 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 a lot of times I see things happening and I don't get involved in the conversation because I know strategically that's the wrong move people make. Mm -hmm. But, like, I wanted a few people to go heads up against the radio and, and live to tell about it, talk yeah. about it. Um, physically in the streets going heads up against the police, live to talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, I go out of town and go heads up with other rappers that don't know that we are who we are back home live to talk about it, you know what I'm saying? So I, I feel like <clears throat> people have seen me be kind of like a derelict. Mm. And for a while, it was um, very chaotic in my life because I was raging so many different wars that I really didn't know where any of the smoke was coming from. And I started to develop a bit of a, a, a haziness about what my own goals were. Mm -hmm. So... Um, just being in the position to be a, a person who has had some influence on the city, uh, a person who was blessed enough to start writing raps when I was 12. Mm -hmm. um, and I ain't really worked a job job since who knows how long. I don't even know I fill out a job application no more. <laughs> so <laughs> I it's can't, <laughs> you feel me? So yeah. I can't really be... Uh, I don't. I no longer seek to have this uh, this oppositional force that's like walking around saying, "I, I y'all should know I did this. Y'all should know I did that." If I'm doing my job, they gonna know I did it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's supposed to. I shouldn't have to tell them I did it. It's mm -hmm. gonna. If if it's really real and there's no cap involved, mm -hmm. it's gonna be what it's gonna be. Yeah. And you don't. Um, you don't um, tally the score on a legacy while you still building the machine, while you still building the legacy, while you still unpacking the career. A legacy is what you count the score on when you're done. So mm -hmm. at the end of it all, if people feel a certain way or don't know about it, then we could talk about it. Mm -hmm. But right now, the, the, the game footage is still playing. We still on the floor. The clock is still ticking. Mm -hmm. Do you do uh, you still keep in tune with the uh, the uh, scene as far as like the oh, like the most definitely up, the, the up and coming cats and things of most that most definitely yeah. I, that, man I know everything going on mm -hmm. for real I know more going on than people think I know for mm -hmm. real um, I keep a pulse on um, uh, so so much different stuff I couldn't even tell you not only in St Louis because what made my career pop and I always wanted to tell this to a lot of MCs is that, you know, we can't, especially coming from here, don't get caught up in the numbers. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Don't get caught up in, oh, we put this video out, and it's three months later, and it's only did XX amount of views. It don't matter because if you're really conducting yourself in a way that is, uh, you know, bossed up, it's more so about the impact anyway. 
Because mm-hmm. the dude who got those numbers, I guarantee you, probably don't have the impact that you got on this city. Mm-hmm. Probably can't move with the people you move with in this city. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people try to discredit the value of being able to move around St. Louis as a made man. Mm-hmm. But this is a rough city to, to, to navigate in. Mm-hmm. So if you're not a made man, I'm going to be able to tell because you're going to be getting caught up with all types of foo-foo beeps. People are going to diss you. You ain't going to know how to respond. It's going to be a crisis every time you get into it, to it with some real ones. Mm-hmm. But when you got the actual people behind you and you actually a man of the people, um, like Pimp C said, man, all them phones mm-hmm. and computers and websites and all that, that's toys. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Um, being able to walk into a restaurant and somebody say, hey, man, you my favorite rapper. This meal cop. You good. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Being able to go to the movies with your lady and, and the dude at the counter like, hey, bro, you just go in. You know what I'm saying? We cool. That That's the impact. Yeah. People, other MCs like yourself that I admire, people who I listen, I listen to your music. You guys having respect for me, for to me, tells me that I did my job, and I'm and I'm still doing my job. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Much love, bro. Uh, when you were coming up, was it anybody that was? Were you inspired by anybody that uh, was you know in an elder? Like were they doing like the the things that you did for us, going out of town and mm-hmm. like making these type of moves? Always Black Spade. Yeah. Um, a lot of people don't know. I get a lot of credit from y'all. Mm-hmm. But for us, I guarantee you, if you talk to Rocky, if you talk to uh, Indiana Rome, um, who else? You talk to, I mean, any any guy that I'm around from my class of, of the MCs from out here, Spade set the standard yeah, Spade, for us. Spade for is us. phenomenal. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> He set the standard, man. He just so happened to be my older brother, yeah. which which made things a little bit more difficult for me creatively sometimes because uh, a lot of people expected me to come out sounding like him, mm-hmm. expected my music to sound like his, expected me to move like he moved, expected me to be, uh, you know what I'm saying, Spade Part 2 or something. Mm-hmm. And for a while, you know what I'm saying, in the early phases of, of my, si- my situation, um, people would just refer to me as Spade, little brother. Mm-hmm. You feel me? But I got the uh, desire to, to be a music man from him because he's a total, complete music man. Um, and he, the way he lives his life is that he prioritizes uh, the music over everything. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Without the music, he don't have no identity. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to be like that. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like I saw how serious he took it. And, and it was just in the fabric of his DNA. I knew a lot of other people would stop making music if it didn't go their way. Uh, but I always knew and still know that, you know what I'm saying, dude is a wealth of music, you know, yeah. like, like on a Stevie Wonder type level. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, ja Davis, uh, Bits and Pieces, Cat Davis, Cat Davis specifically. Rest in peace. I, I wish y'all would have got to see Cat. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, he was the prototype super rapper from St. Louis. Mm. Like, if he would have got to do what we all knew he could have did, everything would have been different. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because um, he was just that good, and he was rapping about pain. Mm. He was like, he's one of the best poets that I've ever heard with my own ears when it pertaining to a person describing the hopelessness of a young black man growing up in St. Louis. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like straight, vivid, raw energy, poetry, bars flying by your head. Like it's just a man you don't want to stand in front of if he if he rapping at you. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Short, stocky dude, take the shirt off. He ripped up. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Got the mic tatted on his chest. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like back then when I was a little shorty. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. witnessing this. You know what I mean? So I got a lot of my... Um, my passion from um, low-key wanting to be like that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Um, and then when um, when when Cat passed, um, he went out, in my opinion, he went out like a straight-up legend, if you know the story. I won't go into the specifics because it's yeah. crazy. It ain't really my business to talk about. But 
um, in terms of his music and his his legacy in that capacity, I always take the space to let people know that I was inspired by that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, he he, cat will cat reminds me of uh, a little bit of all the best St. Louis MCs that we know. Mm. Like if you took a little bit of you, you took a little bit of Dove, you took a little bit of me, you took a little bit of Rock, you took a little bit of this and put it all into like you even put a pinch of Riley B in there. Mm-hmm. It's he was the he was just like a pit bull, unleashed, and, and it was like uh, I promise you, man. Like in in this battle rap era where people standing rappers in front of rappers, man, this dude would have been a star, man. Was was he in the uh, high point? Oh uh, yeah. See they, they see he's from the class above mine, so he would okay. be uh, more of a black spade, one of one of spades contemporaries. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And by the time I stepped on the scene, um. I had been reading about uh, them in the newspaper, the Bits and Pieces album, um, Poverty's Cry, uh, which was, uh, well, I read about their first album, and then they dropped Poverty Cry, which was which was a double CD. Wow. St. Louis Cats dropping a double CD on an actual record label. Mm. It's pressed up. You can go in the store and buy it. You feel me? Just like you can buy a Tupac double album, you can buy the Cat and Jaw double album. Damn. You know what I'm saying? And... Dude had that type of tenacity where a double album legit made sense. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it was crazy. We had our own Pac, our own Nas. He was he was on that level. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But he was a dude we knew. Mm. It was it was just crazy. It was crazy. So, um, he came up in my brother's class of MCs, and then uh, we were the the crust that was bubbling up under that. You know mm. what I'm saying? And then the rest is history, as they say. And uh, you um, uh, so. The Force. Mm-hmm. How did that come to be? Man, bro. That was like a big coalition of uh, everybody. <laughs> the Force came along because uh, we knew that it was time for uh, a musical revolution in St. Louis. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and nobody has ever really asked me these questions for real. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And... Um, a lot of people know the history and a lot of people don't know the history. Mm-hmm. You feel me? But um, a lot of people still, I see a lot of people trying to figure out why I got some of the sauce I got. Mm-hmm. Or they think it come from this, and they, but they, then they find out it come from that. Mm-hmm. But the, so, the force was really the preliminary stages of my career. I wasn't really um, the person you see standing in front of you, sitting in front of you right now yet. Mm-hmm. I had a... Uh, I uh, so the force started because a lot of us were a member were members of a, a, a crew called Soul Tide, mm-hmm. uh, which was a monstrous situation. I was blessed to even be a part of, even though I was just starting out. <laughs> I was carrying cats bags. I was yeah. I was just happy to be around, dog. You know what I'm saying? But uh, shout out to my man Mustafa the scientist. Rest in peace to uh, Seldom Seen. Um, them two guys took a lot of penitentiary chances to put a lot of us in um, some positions. Mm. And uh, they wasn't really like street dudes, but they was just real smart dudes who who were in the streets to right. some extent. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just guys that was brushing elbows with everybody, knew everybody, uh, was putting plays together. And they put this crew together with Black Spade. And... Um, Spade was supposed to be the nucleus of the crew in terms of um, being the producer. He was an in-house producer. So just imagine this. We got a record label where Black Spade is the in-house producer. These dudes got well over $100,000 in the bank, Hmm. right? We start off in a small uh, studio apartment in U-City right across the street from Shells. Mm -hmm. That grows into um, we need more space because all the artists is coming through there. So they they were already building a studio downtown with um, the artists that they had already had in a cipher, like Spade and I think Nato Khalif. Mm-hmm. And um, we moved downtown to the big studio once they got that set up. I'm talking about we independent. Mm-hmm. We got the same boards that they got in the big L.A. studios, mm-hmm. downtown St. Louis. Mm-hmm. We got a whole floor of a loft before people even doing loft apartments. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? I go to the studio. I don't got to go home. 
You feel me? I stay in the county, but the studio in the city downtown. I'm fresh out of high school, bro. I ain't even think about doing nothing else. <laughs> I just went down there so every day. I'm talking about even if I wasn't recording, I was there. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And um, that's when we started working on um, an album that is kind of like, I would describe it as like a, a Thelonious Monk one take type of album. Like if you, either you got it or you don't. It mm -hmm. was the Soul Tide uh, compilation album. Uh, all of us was on there. Myself, Spade, uh, Khalif. Uh, and then uh, the different acts that was on the label at that time too. Some of them guys don't rap no more. Mm -hmm. So if I said their name, you wouldn't really know who I was talking about. But um, that taught me about organization and the pros and the cons and the do's and the don'ts and how, how a crew could win and how a crew could fall apart. Mm -hmm. Because uh, we had a lot of we had a, some stupid record deals on the table. Because people were looking at it like, yo, y'all are, this is crazy. This is a whole clique of cats. Mm -hmm. my, my songs and stuff wasn't really up to par to me personally back then. I couldn't really write a hook. I used to rap hella off beat. Mm -hmm. um, and, man, I was just figuring it out, dog. I was just happy to be around seeing these cats make these songs. Spade and Coltrane, uh, my boy Cash, uh, who really taught me a lot about how to MC. Mm -hmm. Um that situation ends up falling apart after Black Spade gets signed. Mm -hmm. um, and he kind of go do his thing and figure out what his album going to sound like. We still in the hood for real. Mm -hmm. Me and all the homies. And we, the young guys. Yeah. So we all stand in the same house trying to figure it out. <laughs> mm -hmm. A lot of wild stuff starts happening. You know what I'm saying? People don't really, a lot of people don't really perceive me to be uh, a street dude to some capacity, you know what I'm saying? But if you really know me, you kind of know, like, hey, Tef know a little, he know a lot of guys, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He, he, don't let the smooth taste fool you. But uh, I also knew early in life that defining myself according to people's visual contextual, contextualization of what they thought a street dude was didn't really serve me much. You know what I'm saying? Because I still got to be able to find a job because I'm a rapper, bro. Yeah, They ain't paying me to rap for real. Mm -hmm. You feel me? I still got to be able to, to uh, take care of myself. I still got to be able to hustle and not get caught. I still got to do a lot of stuff. You know what I'm saying? And I, so back when the studio situation collapsed, you would come in the crib. And this I, I've always been the person that said, if they going left, I might go right. If it makes sense to go left with them, I'll go. But if they if it don't, I ain't going to set myself up for no dummy stuff. Right. So I would come in the crib back then, man. You would see somebody cutting crack in the kitchen, bro. You know what I'm saying? Laser beams. It was wild back then. We was we were some wild little dudes, man. Mm -hmm. And that matures into what became the force. Okay. So us feeling a bit neglected by our big brothers, you know, Spade and my man Coltrane. Coltrane's like hip hoppers don't talk enough about Coltrane, I feel, because he wasn't a rapper. Mm -hmm. He was a singer. Mm. But the dude, I've, I've never heard another, I've never seen another artist record this many records. I've never seen another artist stay in the studio like he stayed in the studio. Mm. I've never seen another artist that was just that instant with their talent on stage. Him and Spade started mixing it up and became this crazy dynamic duo. Mm -hmm. So they was off doing them. And we did a big radio interview one night on Hot 10. I was like, I don't even know if it was, Hot 104 was around back then. But we did a radio interview. And Train came to the, to, the, to the rest of us and was like, immediately after the interview, it was like, yo, I'm leaving. And we was like, you leaving? He was like, yeah, I'm leaving. And this is a big, tall cat. Used to play ball before he started singing. Could have went to the NBA for real. Mm. So he was like, yo, I'm leaving. And we was like, what that mean? He was like, it's time for y'all to be men. <laughs> I, I'll never forget this. <laughs> and then, so I'm like, yo, basically our Marvin Gaye. This dude was like our Marvin Gaye. If we Motown, he's every bit of our Marvin Gaye. And he's like, yo, I'm leaving. Y'all going to have to figure it out. It's time for y'all to be men. Back then, I didn't understand that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I didn't understand it. I'm like, yo, we in the trench fighting for survival. What y'all mean y'all leaving? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, they can't hold your hand. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's a jungle out here. Mm -hmm. You got to get yours. They got to get theirs. Mm -hmm. So emerging out of the, the, we used to call the crib the 48. Emerging out of the 48, the force just started because we, we knew we didn't have a fighting chance without each other, basically. Mm -hmm. For real. And um, we knew that if we stayed unified and created a wave, it was going to trickle down. 
and we knew that uh, most of these DJs are people who really don't give a damn about music. Mm -hmm. They folks who, especially in St. Louis, and come for me if you want, I don't care. Uh, Y'all don't play my records, no way. Uh, the DJs in this city, for more times than not, are finessers. Mm -hmm. The people who are occup occupational DJs. Mm -hmm. They only in the hip hop up until the point where um, they youth expires. When they youth expires, when they ears expire, they don't know nothing after that. Mm -hmm. They don't know nothing after that or before that. They only know they era of the music when it was the peak interest to them, when they could go to the club and smash this girl because they was a DJing, or when mm -hmm. this record was the hot record that everybody was doing the same dance to. Mm -hmm. After that, they have no contextualization for uh, expanding the culture. Yeah. So I would never put my career in the hands of a person that ain't made more than $15 an hour. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like these are employees of a situation or somebody who got $250 to show up and spend whatever records they had in a um, reservoir. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> I used to say things like that publicly <laughs> as an up and coming artist who, who hadn't accomplished nothing. Right. And um, the force was necessary because that was us coming together in a way that gave us coverage hmm. to say and do things that we needed to do in order to push the culture forward. Hmm. So it was just a conglomerate of artists, singers, poets, um, promoters. We had DJs in our staple, yeah. uh, photographers. It was just us saying there's no industry here and how do we give us our chance to sell, we, how do we give ourselves a fighting chance to create some industry? Because mm -hmm. y'all had like not only did you have rappers, pr producers, I think, didn't May Monarchs come from? from May, that May Monarchs too? was doing their thing um, before we was we even met them. Okay. Um, they were all in high school. And they was in um, high school? I think they, they knew each other from high school. Okay. And then they emerged into um, the scene as a, as, a, as a thing after that. Like okay. they had, uh, Adrian had the website mm -hmm. and all of that. Um, he always was a visionary. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I ain't even surprised that he where he at in life right now because mm -hmm. he was always, even when he was a, a young dude, he was a visionary, man. He he was a visionary like a mug. Um, the city was better when we had people like that living here. Yeah, facts. Um, I know just going back to when you said uh, Spade um, had like a deal situation, um, and I'll probably have to interview him too just to get like more like perspective on it. Yeah, but yeah. Did he not want us to come along? The fame, because like when you listen to Spade, he should be way farther yeah. than, like, than where he, he is. And, yeah, yeah. And then I heard stories. I even talked to him once. He was telling like the the, the people that he knows, and I, I heard Spade is a uh, in the industry. Everybody knows Spade to yeah. some extent um, for his type of music. Mm -hmm. Man, his name ring bells. Um. I think it is, you know, you got to remember, Spade is my actual biological brother. Yeah. Um, what I would say about Spade is this, man. He just ain't willing to bow down. You feel me? He don't make no concessions. Mm -hmm. um, he come from um, the, old, the old St. Louis. You know what I'm saying? Like the... The original St. Louis, you feel me? That that very few of us even interacted with. You feel me? Like he come from that. Like when gang banging first hit the city, Hitman T and I mean, when you really sit down with Black Spade, you hear some stories that sound like pure mythicism, but they actually be reality. And um, I think a lot of that even goes back to our father, Frank Jackson, who was even crazier than us. Mm -hmm. And we just was two cats who was raised by this crazy dude who did a lot of stuff. And then it was just kind of always lingering over our head that we had to try to do more. Um, but I think Spade just does not have, I'm going to be real. If you think I have a dis, dis, disdain for uh, normalcy, Spade got a complete hatred for for, doing, for playing by the rules. Mm -hmm. It's just not in him to play by the rules whatsoever, man. Mm -hmm. That's what's up, man. Um, yeah, Spade, Spade is definitely one of a kind. Yeah, man. Um, would you, like, you, uh, you know what I'm saying, being with the force and, and everything, I, I first heard of you when I was in probably high school. Man. I had 
Sound Revolution. <laughs> The one dollar mixtapes. Yeah, 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 the one dollar boys. Yep, that's, yeah, that's DJ what Trackstar, first. Trackstar. Yeah, Anson, you've been rocking with Trackstar for that long. Yeah, bro? that's my man. Yeah, because I remember it, it was you. We started all this together, man. The the the, the thing is, <laughs> I, I I wish Track would have been around to see some of the things we actually did, because even he doesn't have a conceptualization for how crazy this was yeah. at the peak of what we was doing. You know what I'm saying? Like, at the yeah. peak of what we was doing, it, it was, I mean, you would have thought we were, we were comparable to, to the biggest things going on it, it, out here Pretty in a way, much, in yeah. a way that, that was no capping, too. Like, we would hit the club with, uh, with 50 to 100 dudes mm -hmm. and shut it down. Like, in St. Louis, like, mm -hmm. we, go, we walking in with 50 cats, period. With mm -hmm. the force, there was no way we couldn't because it was 50 members or more. Yeah. And everybody got they people, and everybody got they squad, and they with them, and they with them. And then you bring your mans, and I bring my mans. Man, we got an army now. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no backing us down. We going to club. We standing on the couches. We ain't asking to get in VIP. We got 30 dudes who gonna go. We gonna go in VIP anyway. Who gonna tell us we, we can't do it? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You gonna play the song at least once mm -hmm. because you see we in here, mm -hmm. and you know, and you, <laughs> and you know, <laughs> it can get crazy. Get ugly. You know what I'm saying? And we, and it was what was wild for us was. Uh, the gangster rap side of the scene kind of considered us the nerds, mm. but for us, we we felt like we was really pushing. We 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 felt like steppers for real because yeah. we was like we getting results that y'all can't get because mm. we unify and we organize and and we willing to take certain um, certain falls for each other. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like when Rocky uh, Rockwell Knuckles had a um, performance where he could have got signed by Ludacris. Hmm. And um, we we packed that venue with so many people, bro. I'm talking about everybody hood was in that mug. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? I got my guys in there. My man Nate had his guys in there. Rocky got his guys in there. You feel me? Rome in there. Um, Spade in there. We all in there. We was all in there. We all fell in. Teresa Payne, even the women would fall in back then in the force. That's what made the force different, too, that the women grinded just as hard as the dudes, yeah. if not harder. So we all was in there. Mm -hmm. And all you heard was that man name reverbing throughout the venue. Crazy. And to the point where Luda and them had to say, like, well, we see you brought your people out. But what they didn't understand was we was a legit movement in the city. Yeah. That wasn't no... That wasn't no finessing. That wasn't no extra sauce on the side. That was legit. This how we roll every other day, whether y'all in here or not. We gonna be in here like this. Facts, and that's that's how it uh, it was at your shows too. Like your people was there, I'm, and as they should be. Like when you throw a show, your your people should come out. Yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, man. That's uh, Rock, Rocky. He's he's another special one. Yeah, yeah. One of the goats, man. And like just you. Having that type of just all those creative people, you know what I'm saying, in your squad, you really had no choice but to get better. Like still sharp oh, and still. Oh man, you ain't never lied. Like that's bro. that's that's the pinnacle of competition right what there. You, what you're saying is real. For me and Rocky, it was uh I don't think it was ever competition between us. Mm -hmm. I think uh for uh, there was a certain part portion of time where I would openly admit that he was a better rapper than me. Mm -hmm. And I've always been honest about assessing my talent. Mm -hmm. and, you know, that's how I've been able to make moves and expand and grow and figure out what was for me and what wasn't for me, just being honest about it. Yeah. And so there was a point in time when we were coming up where I did feel like he was a better rapper than me. Mm -hmm. He had lines and he concepts and things that, and, and he had manipulations of the flow and he had a, um, a understanding of the city. He was in the trenches a little bit harder than I was to some degree. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what I'm saying? He, he, he was out here living his rap life. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? A, a, like a young dude living like a grown man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So uh, I, I was late to the party in them regards because I was more so around Spade and them. And at that point, it was they show. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So... Uh, where me and him start to formulate a friendship is that 
around a space where, you know, him and his guys were really my contemporaries. They was really the guys that was closer to what I wanted to be like, closer to what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, they, they was making the type of music I wanted to make. Not saying that the music that we was making with my crew wasn't what I wanted to make, right. but they were just more true to the generation that I came from. Mm -hmm. So um, I, we just started hanging out. My man Gotta Be Kareem had, had linked us. And um, we used to we just used to hang out, man. We used to hang out. We used to just like some lost boys, just roaming in the U City Loop, tr trying to find things to get into, mm -hmm. hanging with girls, trying to find dudes who you know was was spitting that we could bounce things off of, bump, bumping into producers, just really cultivating um, the community yeah. before it was really even a community before any of it even existed. We was out there mm -hmm. cultivating it. Like we didn't go home. We had no, like, like, like we wasn't mama's boys. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of cats that rap nowadays, they mama's boys. They got to touch back to the home base. Mm -hmm. They can't really get out here and mix it up with the pterodactyls and, and the lions and the tigers and the bears. Yeah. So we was out there um, kind of like as the, the what, what they would call, like, the Lupe Fiasco rappers, mm -hmm. but mixing it up with, 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 with the guys out there. Yeah. And um, that, that gave us a different um, level of respect over the course of time. Yeah, and that's just for me looking from the outside in, like, you know, you, like, you two in particular, like, you guys get respect from everybody. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? From the from the verbs to the Jules yeah. to man. the Bows and the Doves and Bro, the D Max. And, I, man, you know what? I, I don't take that for granted. You feel me? Because I feel like there's portions of time where you listen to somebody like A Verb. Mm -hmm. And you could, I could legit make the case at a certain point in time that Averb is the best rapper alive, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. From, because I, I have some sensitivities that's gonna hear what he's spitting differently because he sound like a St. Louis dude because he is a St. Louis dude. Right. I've been listening to him. You said you've been listening to me since you was in high school. Mm -hmm. I've been listening to him since I was in high school. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, I have a contextualization for his story differently than I'm gonna have for uh, another rapper that I haven't seen. Uh, get out here and mix it up and try to figure out and find his pace and find his time and now he in a stride that's just ungodly. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I could say the same. I could say the same about Rockwell. There was a period of time where I really felt like he was the best rapper alive. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't say these things easily about MCs. Yeah. So for me to say that, make that concession in my own talent to say that about another rapper, um, that's me being honest. And I'm always. Uh, tasking myself with being real even about what's going on even if if you got it over me i'm gonna say this nigga bringing it man mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying he bringing it yeah. and i like that because that make me have to go sit down and analyze myself and say what can i do to get on that level so i take the i don't take the respect from other mcs and, and people who i consider professional killers lightly mm -hmm. at all at all for real when you when you came up as a like as a up and coming, you know what I'm saying, artist here, did the did the guys above you like from like different, you know, classes, did did they embrace you, you know what I'm saying, like show like show love and vouch for you and, and stuff like that? I mean, like for the that? most part, you gotta earn the respect. Okay. Um I tell people all the time, your situation turn around when you start rapping for respect. Mm hmm Um That's what change my situation when the day that I decided I was rapping for respect mm -hmm. I wasn't just rapping to be rapping I wasn't um I was actually trying to represent something and hold a certain line mm -hmm. and um that changes it because now it's not just about uh the, some crafty wordplay that you said that another dude might try to wing off of and bite mm -hmm. because now you can't bite the authenticity yeah you feel me Sometimes there's certain songs I do with cats where I don't even rap to my fullest ability of rapping because it just doesn't require that because my aura has worked so adamantly to show you what I'm about that you, you know what I'm about. I can, you can hear it and unpack it all for yourself. You can go on your own journey with what I'm talking about mm -hmm. and process it differently. Um, but to be real, when I did focus on... Um, the wrong things. There was a portion of my career where I did focus on the wrong things, I feel. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, and But it's hard to say when you was in my position mm -hmm. because it wasn't no tough pose. 
Yeah. We was looking for the Bodines. We was looking for the Dubs. We was we knew that y'all existed, mm-hmm. and we knew y'all was coming. But we was literally on the killing fields by mm-hmm. ourselves at that time. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, and the sound of the city didn't sound nothing like what we was presenting. No, not at so all. a lot of people thought we were out of pocket. They thought we was reaching. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and I can concretely say it. I'm, I'm here to tell you now that I survived the wars mm-hmm. that a lot of the institutionalized support for what we was doing didn't come. Mm-hmm. And we had to build the institutions. Now, years later, I'm better for it because it's the reason I'm eating. And a lot of people got to explain to their kids why they got a rap name. The kids don't even know they did this at some point. Like, mm-hmm. Daddy, why they call you blah, blah, blah? Well, son, I used to. I ain't never going to be no used to be anything. Mm-hmm. Once I decided I was Tough Poe, I'm going in the grave as that. Mm, it's deep. It's deep. Hey, we're going we gonna to take a brief break, and we're going to come back. Um, we actually going to premiere this, well, not premiere, but we're going to show this new video that, that you dropped a little minute ago. It's called uh, Be Careful. Yeah, yeah, love, love. And uh, you want to uh, give an explanation of what that's uh, about, Yeah, bro? man. Um, uh, you know, I, it's crazy, dog. I didn't got to the point where I've been making music um, where people straight up come up to me and be like, yo, we need the old tempo back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, yo, that's crazy. I don't even know what that means. You know what I'm saying? But I'm a, hey, can I? <laughs> uh, okay. So. My 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 favorite project from you is the Hero Killer. Yeah, you told me that from start to finish, bro. You told it was, me that. You it told was just raw and, told me that. and authentic, like just from the production stand standpoint, and then just like just where you was at, you know, that what I'm was, saying uh, at that. That was me, Chase the Money, and B Money, mostly yeah. on that. And then I think Trifecta was on that. Yeah, it was great production on that, yeah. all over that. It, it you was you had just finished. Killing niggas on 106 and Park, like you was on your like the whole city knew that all right, this nigga's about to blow, and that and that was the project that was like all right, y'all like I'm hungry I'm like the industry need to mm-hmm. make room mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying and then that's that was like that was just your that was just you on your cuffs man yeah, it, was, it yeah. was just I know what you're saying it, it was um the concepts the I used to sit up late at night still rapping I'm talking about. That's back when I knew, if you knew me back then, one thing you would say about me was, yo, Tef is always writing. Mm-hmm. Um, while everybody else was doing off doing dumb stuff. Mm-hmm. They'd be off messing with some girls. They'd be off doing this, going to parties. They'd be off wasting time doing this. Mm-hmm. Man, I was writing, bro. And the only reason I used to write like that is because I saw a, a, a interview uh, with Nelly, and they was talking about the rest of his crew in comparison to him. Mm-hmm. And it was like, well, he spent a month in the studio. They had a studio they called The Hole. He spent a month in the studio and didn't come out. And he said it himself. He was like, I ain't come out. I ain't go take no showers. I ain't change no clothes. I ain't do this. They had to come down there and bring stuff to me. Mm-hmm. He was like, I was in the studio making this music. Mm-hmm. And I said, this dude did that. And you can't think that it's a coincidence that he went diamond putting right. that type of energy into himself. Facts. So I said, I at least got to give my writing that level of dedication if I really want to be what I think I can be. Yeah. And I was de- directly inspired by that interview. That's dope, man. We're going to talk more about it in a minute. Be careful. Tell Poe. You did. <laughs> For who you pray to Cause even Satan got some power that can't break through Be careful who you pray to Be careful Go deep inside my head until I'm dead, that's just a fact Know that bastard raped my sister on his brains, I left six racks I positioned all my soldiers, case his soldiers brought it back True story, no imagination needed in my raps Niggas think they can Zelda to the system, fella Expression of a ghetto child, my enemies can't scrape me A lot, I'm just your baby, I'm gon' be what you gon' make me I'm smoking on this tree, just to see where it's gon' take me A message from my usual, confusing the game See how Judas did Jesus, they gon' do you the same 
I need a Rari with the engine that produces a flame Gang signs being flashed as we swerve in the lane I told my life story and she observing the pain Late night on Sydney Street and it was never the same These are the rules that we created, recreated This are the rules that we created, recreated You sip this drink and see your clothing be alleviated Sip this drink and see your clothing get alleviated Yeah, be careful who you pray to Cause even Satan got some power that can break through Be careful who you pray to Cause even Satan got some power that can break through Be careful who you pray to Cause even Satan got some power that can break through Governor Parson got niggas in the cell for nothing I see him walk the line and they won't tell for nothing White America get ready, they say hell is coming I said America get ready, they say hell is coming I'm delicate enough to cry on the phone with my mama But masculine enough to break the backbone of my woman Hennessy make 80% of its profits off of black The fortune off of those whose soul has soul crack So I can't walk inside the liquor store without my strap I can't walk inside the liquor store without my strap Be careful who you pray to Cause even Satan got some power that can break through Yeah, we gave these devils everything and they can't love us back I would've gave that girl Lorene, but I'm in love with rap Be careful who you pray to Cause even Satan got some power that could break through Break through, break through, yeah Yeah, we back. Bodine, Tough Poe, STL versus everybody. Um, so man, like we man, we've been talking about, you know what I'm saying, just just the history of, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying, Tef, like your like your upbringing, you know what I'm saying, yo, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. come up with, with like music. And I know we got plenty more to go. I'm like I'm it's chapters that we can cover, you know what I'm saying, as far as like the the high point days, or you know, what I'm saying, the, like the force. You know who would have killed High Point? Who? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> high Point was perfect for a rapper like you, bro. Yeah, for real. You would have destroyed it, bro. It would have been crazy. What, like, what, what did they do? Like, was it like they just played beats and niggas a freestyle? I or? mean, for the most part, it was a party. Okay. For the most part, everybody in there kicking it. Mm -hmm. Mind you, the place is mad small. They fitting five hundred people in this place every week. Yeah. But it's stupid small. <laughs> I mean, the bottom is like a. I don't even. I can't even remember what the bottom of the place was. But you come in, you walk upstairs. I think it was like a restaurant or something. Like, mm -hmm. I don't even remember what it was down there. But uh, you walk upstairs, and when you walk upstairs, it's kind of like it wasn't designed to be. A hip hop joint. It was, it was a small punk rock venue, basically that mm -hmm. had been commodified by um, Midwest Avengers. Uh, my man John, he used to call himself BC back then, and then um, Finsta. And um, y'all didn't get to see Finsta and them as rappers. I was about to ask that. I yeah. heard Finsta had bars, man. Finsta was sick, and uh, Finsta knew how to build a crew. Uh, his crews was always synchronized. Mm -hmm. um, most of us felt like uh, Fenster's crew, uh, they used to call themselves Ruckus crew, they was a direct response to uh, the lunatics. Oh. Like, um, they, could, they, they was always fresh. They had, they had, they'd be dripping like they was famous rappers. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, they go to their shows, they all synchronized. They not on stage looking dirty. They all, you know what I'm saying? They look like stars. Mm hmm and they move like stars, they conduct themselves like stars in the community. Mm -hmm. um, they was the art for, for and people forget Nelly and them come out of that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? All these guys know each other. Me and Rocky after that wave. Mm -hmm. Rocky a little bit more advanced than me in terms of jumping off the porch. Mm -hmm. So he, he brushed elbows with a couple of them too. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I felt like they was just the answer to that. All the, everybody that made it at a certain point came out of the high point. You know, it was like grooming. Yeah, that proving grounds, kind of yeah. like how they tried to do with the uh, Sunday ciphers. 
precisely, but it was different though mm. because you'd be in there partying, you'd be in there drinking, mm -hmm. people selling incense in the back. The conversations that occurred before you even got on stage dictated what happened when you got on stage mm -hmm. because it, it, what made it so dope too was you saw battles that just wasn't supposed to occur. Mm -hmm. I saw the All-Stars, uh, Nimi, mm -hmm. uh, Russell, and D-Mac. I saw them niggas battle in person mm. at the high point, and that was a big deal. Battled each other? Yeah. Oh, shit. That was a big, big deal. Yeah. Big, big deal. Like, people was in there. Like, And you got to remember, these are the, the gangster crews of the city, right? Yeah. So they, I look outside the window because for us it was a big deal that them type of cats would come to the high point Cause we like we holding it down and we want to we want to see where y'all fans at. Yeah. Cause we know where they at up in here, mm -hmm. so we want to see where y'all's at. You know what I'm saying? On the other side of the, in the other scene. Yeah. So um, them guys came up in there cause they had Nimi and Nimi was a killer back then. Mm -hmm. So he came in there and battled D Mac, bro. I think them dudes battled for like a thousand dollars. Cause back then it was just like if I got five, you got five. Let's let's just stop talking and put the money up. Yeah. So who won? <laughs> I think Mac got him. It was hard to beat D Mac in the high point. Mac, he he's an he's an he's an incredible freestyler. D Mac, low key, depending on how you want to look at it, and some people might stone me for saying this. I feel D Mac is top three MCs in the history of the city mm. for. The amount of men that stood in front of D-Mac and, and he ain't back down. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The amount of people that he that he looked in the eye and said, "I feel I'm better than you." Let's see, let's see what's up. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he would just pick, he wouldn't duck no phase. He wouldn't wait no month. He wouldn't. It wasn't no I'm a right for you. It wasn't no Do it. nah. We here. Let's get it popping. Yeah. Cool. I I, I did you in tonight. Mm -hmm. I'm outside. Who else I got to do it? Right, but I also have seen D Mac lose some battles, which make him even bigger a bigger goat to me. Mm -hmm. Because uh, you might not be able to say he wanted to go musically because you haven't heard that much music from him, right? But on an MC level, to stand in front of that many human beings and live to talk about it and not have an embarrassing legacy where we could talk, we could open our mouths and talk about that man. And I know damn well I've seen him stand in front of. In my time alone, I seen him stand in front of over a hundred MCs. So I knew he stood in front of more of that throughout the ages. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, just on that aspect of what a rapper is to me, mm -hmm. he wanted the best. Uh, but but what who I really wanted to be conceptually, keeping it one hundred, I wanted to be Jule. Mm. Um, he gets so much respect in the city, bro. Like yeah. everybody, like be like Jule. Yeah. That guy. how y'all consider us a certain module of an MC, mm -hmm. he was that for, for us. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because to me, Jule could do what D-Mac could do. Mm -hmm. He ain't duck no phase either. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. He, he, took, he, took, he sent a lot of guys to the cemetery mm -hmm. that stood in front of him. You know what I'm saying? But he also uh, was going back to give you records. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I ain't saying D-Mac couldn't give you records. I'm just saying that Jule was giving us that, but he was giving you that that that, that MC jousting, mm -hmm. and I could pick up a mixtape and listen to some crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. I heard, you know, what I'm saying I heard him rapping about uh, using a sleeping in the trap, using the Mac as a pillow. Mm. Uh, and this is back in the day with these. This is a new bar. This ain't a remix bar. This is a bar he thought of and put into the, the zeitgeist. Mm -hmm. You feel me? And he had brush elbows with Red Man and Diddy and all them cats, like mm -hmm. for real. So. Uh, I had high hopes that he was going to break through and become one of our like national representatives, which he is. Yeah. But uh, back then, I, we, uh, I, you know, Drew was one of my examples. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he, he's a, uh, if I could compare him to anybody, like just in like a category, he reminds me of, like a Beanie Siegel type of, you know yeah. what I'm saying, cat. Just more, yeah. more versatile with it. To me, I see what you're saying, but to me, he's like, um, 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 I would say he, he. I understand what you're saying when you say the Beanie Siegel part because it's not, he's not lying in his music. Mm -hmm. But also, I feel that he, he's like beans with a pinch of Royce 
sometimes. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And a pinch of Scarface. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, and you can throw some Cube in there if you want. Yeah. But um, you know, he just he just one of them guys. He's like like we look for hybrid MCs. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You know, how, as a as a as an MC yourself, mm -hmm. you look you lean into the people who can do a little bit of everything, mm -hmm. and <clears throat> but also just got the the hardest stuff. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that was just one of them examples for us. Do you think like is it necessary for like artists? <laughs> excuse me. Is it necessary for artists now to get signed to a major? You know what I'm saying? Nah. To see that su you don't even need no deal nowadays, bro. Yeah, man. Um, like even what y'all doing with AMG, uh, I respect it because I always respect organization. Mm -hmm. If you want to impress me, get organized. Mm -hmm. um, I don't respect nothing that's chaotic, nothing that don't have a plan, nothing that's not strategized. Uh, you can anybody can hit a basket by accident. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If we just shooting at that window, eventually we're gonna break it. Mm -hmm. We might break it the first try, we might break it the last try. But if we just keep shooting at it, we're gonna break it. Now if you got a coordinated plan to break that window, when it do break, you already know what to do on the other side of the window when the glass fall. Mm -hmm. I'm more interested in that type of structure. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I don't think you need no label, man. You, you concretely don't. People proving it every day. Yeah. yeah. So so what's what's uh what's the next for Tef Paul? Um, we're gonna put this album out. Um me and Dub, T Dub O got this Contra album mm -hmm. coming out. Um, um and then I got a lot of solo music that I plan on dropping. Uh, mm -hmm. I've been sorting things out with my label because I'm on I'm still signed to Tommy Boy. Mm -hmm. But um sometimes being from St. Louis and choosing to stay attached to St. Louis um, can slow you down in ways that you can't predict. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of people look at me like, damn, Poe, what happened? You was putting out music, what, you slowed up. I never really slowed up to this capacity musically. Mm -hmm. uh, part of the reason is, man, I got so much other stuff going on yeah. that um, I'm, I'm eating off of that it's hard to... Uh, to wean myself off that stuff and 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 jump into uh, rap full time like that mm -hmm. because rap bores me on a certain level now mm -hmm. because you're surrounded by people who and this just real you're surrounded by dudes who making up stories about who they are uh, it's a lot of jealousy in hip hop uh, it's a lot of uh, just bickering and and. You know, I'm in a space now where if certain people say my name. I, I'm chilling, but I ain't really chilling. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I just respond to that. I don't want to respond. I got so much going on that I just can't respond to that energy in a foolish way. Thanks. Um, and uh, but outside of that, I do got a point to prove. Mm -hmm. I feel I got a chip on my shoulder now. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And um, I also. Know that we ain't finished the job. You feel what I'm saying? We got things to do. It's, it's we building companies, we expanding brands. Uh, I got some artists that I'm interested in helping groom. You know, um, it's just a lot I want to do, and I I feel like I've done a lot, but I ain't done a fraction of actually what I want to do. Yeah. I feel like a lot of the things I, I've done were things that were necessary to make the reality that I wanted to see manifest. Mm -hmm. I feel like Kareem Jackson did a lot of things to make uh, Tef Poe's reality real for yeah. the artists. Mm -hmm. Now I'm in a space where uh, a lot of the stuff I'm doing is stuff that I sincerely want to do. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Like I'm not uh, functioning from a space of necessity no more. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of that don't got nothing to do with uh, money and um, the numbers on the records and all of that. Cause even for the most part, I'm in a decent space with all of that. You know what I'm saying? My my records don't, it ain't like people don't listen to my music. Right. So it's like, uh, I've also built a catalog of classics for the people who do listen to me. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And I don't say that just because I want to say it's a classic. I say it because I'm, I'm showing you it's a classic. Mm -hmm. I ain't dropped a record in how many 
months, how many years at this point? I ain't dropped a record in two years, a serious record, a solo record that we actually put in a budget behind. We actually, me and Stretch sitting up throwing things at the wall and saying, how are we going to make this go? And the whole campaign and the rollout, I really ain't did that since 2017. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? And I'm still seeing more fans galvanized through my, through my music. My social media is still growing. My streams are still expanding. Mm -hmm. um, we still dropping singles, but I just haven't put out a, 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 a body of work that, yeah. that people can sit with. But also that's because um, I wanted to show, once again, people that a real artist should have staying power. You know what I'm saying? I should be tough po to you regardless to if I dropped a new record or not, if I'm really real, if I'm really who we've dressed me up to be, who we, if I'm really the person that we put these garments on mm -hmm. and said, that's that particular rapper, mm -hmm. and he got this going on, and he that, and he that, and he, woo, woo, woo. I don't got to tell you what's going on, it's going on. And you know what I'm saying? Um, I think that, like I said, when you're building a legacy, it's just important to uh, have a bird's eye view of it. Mm -hmm. So I look at, you know, like Black Julian, um, the whole Black Julian series is like, those were some good records for me. They did yeah. some good things for my life, not just my music career, just my life. Yeah. And uh, I've been able to chill and just let people get into what I did, what I do, uh, with the War Machine series, um, War Machine 3. That's one of my highest streaming albums, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Um, I don't buy streams, I don't manipulate my streams. What I, what I do is what I do, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And, I mean, every day somebody listening to that record, you know oh. what I'm saying? Um, and then you, you trick that trickles down into, like, what I've been doing lately is a lot of collaborations. Um, I got the, uh, the, the record that me and Monk did together, which is all acoustic. Um, it's a different type of sound. It's a different type of vibe. It's just me relaxed and just making some music that I could play while I'm at the crib smoking an L and yeah. you know what I'm saying, just doing what I do at the house. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm just, I'm, but I'm in that space. I've been in that space, but now I, I'm emerging, man. I'm inspired by a lot of what I'm seeing happen. Um, I see people like uh, Tank the Machine. I think that yeah, boy. A problem. Uh, He's a problem. If you. Look at me and my position in the culture of St. Louis MCs, mm -hmm. and you look at somebody like a Tank the Machine, man, that make me hella happy, bro. Mm -hmm. That dude's a straight up beast with the with, with, with his talent, and Scary. I've seen him work at it to become better to the point where now he's a factor in these conversations. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, Ron G, who mm -hmm. we all know Tank is the anchor, mm -hmm. but Ron been working at his talent and getting oh, yeah. better. You know what I'm saying? And I just got respect for that because every you know people could could uh, easily go away and fade into darkness and be obs obscure. He actually found his own lane with the uh, with the singing. Like, yeah, I was talking to him about a couple of weeks ago. I said, like, "Man, you really need to like, you know, do that more." My thing is, man, just keep coming. Yep. Just keep the fire. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? One thing that that put me in the position to win. The fire, man, the passion, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Just when I lay down at night, you know, my head would be filled with thoughts of, like, how I'm going to take it to the next level, you know, never losing that hunger. Uh, and I'm still like that, you know what I'm saying? If That's why I have to chill because I'm supposed to be in a certain – uh, positionality on the chart, but I, I you know, I kind I'm, I, I'm a Afro Samurai fan. You feel <laughs> me? So if you coming for the number one headband, I might come down off the mountain if yeah. I feel it's real enough. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, you know, but it's very few people who I feel have actually gotten to the top of the mountain. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, but if 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 I feel a way, I might come down out the mountain. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So like, uh, and then I don't have to do certain things that I used to have to do. Cause that's already being handled. You know what I mean? We we just built this thing out in a in a way that's so beautiful to me that um, it gave me an opportunity to really just uh, humanize myself in a way that I ain't been able to do in years. Cause for years I've been plugged into the socket. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And, and I was I felt like I was the handgun, and it was like, yo, just pick me up and bust it. 
and just keep shooting, bro. Don't stop shooting. Just don't stop shooting. Just don't stop shooting. And then you just come to a point where things meet, meet their head, and it's like, yo, you can kind of breathe right now, my dog. You know what I'm saying? And, and so that's the space I'm in, man. And um, I got a lot of music that y'all ain't heard yet, bro. I'm talking about crazy stuff. I got songs with uh, Gangsta Boo. I got joints with Project Pat. I'm waiting on Chino XL to send me this verse back. Chino, Chino XL, if you watch St. Louis verse, everybody. Where you at, man? I need that verse, bro. Where you at, I bro? need the verse, bro. Uh, <laughs> who else? Um, I got I got this verse from um, Young Noble from the Outlaws. Shout out to Young Fire, Noble. bro. I know y'all work with Noble. Didn't y'all do something with Noble? Dub. Dub, Dub did. did something with Noble? Yeah. yeah. Um, Shout out to Rip the General. Rip, man. Rip, that's another guy. Yeah changed a lot of things in the city don't get a lot of credit people you know what i'm saying yeah. um people don't know yeah. they don't know you know what i'm saying but that that's another dude who i i felt uh people try to say like yo he ain't no lyricist woo, 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 woo. what he is is a mastermind though because mm -hmm. he'll show you how to build a movement mm -hmm. you feel me i used to see little dudes that would come up to me and be like rip gave me instead of giving me a pack he gave me these cds to hustle Yep. You know what I'm saying? Ultimate hustler. So mad respect for that. Yeah. Big respect. Um, who else? Um, oh, what else? I'm talking about music. Um, I got a lot of music on the way, dog. Uh, I'm building a studio in the crib. Good. Um, you got the, every artist should have that, man. Uh, yeah, dog. Yeah, dog. We are like it, like. Oh uh, yeah, and I'm making beats. Uh, <laughs> you know, Dub Dub told me that uh, you was making beats. Yeah, I, I think some of the records on the project. Yeah, was, uh, I, produced the couple, I produced I like, a couple. I produced a couple of them oh, on the shit. album. Yeah, I produced yeah. a couple of them. Uh, I threw some to my homie Siraj Watt. He got an album coming out. I used to be in a group with him eons ago. Mm -hmm. um, and that's another thing, man. Don't wait to have a career, dog. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, do your thing now, man. And 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 what I mean by that is, like. A lot of times we wait for these very egotistical moments where we could be like, all right, cool. Now I'm on Meek Mill level. Now I'm on Smino level. I don't care about they level, man. They level is what God got for them. And yep. God gave them what he going to give them. And God going to give me what I'm going to get. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And my level is just determined by whatever the summation of my destiny is. Mm -hmm. And I believe that my destiny is something great. So here we are. I'm, I'm living it out right now. And, and a lot of times people really from the trench – when I, what I call the trench is people really from St. Louis who have limited options and work with what they got. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So I consider you from the trench. I'm from the trench. And people out there from the trench. We people working on what we got. And uh, we didn't abandon our post. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? We could have easily uprooted. I could live anywhere in the world for real right now, bro. Mm -hmm. I could go over here. I could go over there. I could go over there. I live here. It ain't because I, I can't do it it's because i want to do it it's because i understand that my brothers are here in the midst of a war yeah and i don't want to abandon my post because i occupy this position on the field for them and they occupy those positions on the field for me when i see y'all doing y'all thing and i'm doing my thing over here we are strategically setting up a barrier we are strategically man in the conditions of the city and, and we doing our things in different capacities mm -hmm. and then we bring it together like the avengers you know what i'm saying when mm -hmm. it's time for us to uh cross-reference our universes we do it mm -hmm. uh you know i just find inspiration in a lot of that you know because that's what we wanted to see happen yeah you know what i'm saying we wanted to see this manifest mm -hmm. and uh the problem that i saw coming up was a lot of mcs abandoned they post Mm -hmm. They wasn't the people they was telling us that they was on them records. Mm -hmm. they, it was a lot of capping going on in these local rap records. It mm -hmm. was a lot of false flagging. It was a lot of chest poking out. It was a lot of claiming to be big, bad Superman, jumping over buildings, grabbing nunchucks, flipping. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of that going on, mm -hmm. but it wasn't nothing real when it came to who can actually position themselves in the community and not be uprooted and removed from the community yeah. by a lack of will. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yo, man, we got man, we could go on for <laughs> hours, bro. But we uh definitely got to do a part part two soon. Man. Yeah, man. Um, but yo, that contra coming, me and T Dub. This is the thing, bro. When when people see you and Dub working and they know y'all dropping the album together, right? Mm -hmm. As a rapper, that would, if I wasn't cool with y'all, I wouldn't be cool with that. <laughs> I wouldn't be cool with me just being at home. 
chilling and these cats finna do a whole collaboration album like mm -hmm. i gotta get in on that i can't mm -hmm. be on the sideline watching these dudes just destroy the game or even just add another brick to the building and i'm just not contributing i can't be that type of mc yeah so um we come in with the contra uh and i said what i said pr prior to that because if i tell you tef poe and tita about doing the album together and we got so many songs that I'm thinking about that we are thinking about splitting this thing up. Mm -hmm. Everybody should be in the studio. Yeah, nigga, nigga should be worried. I heard it. This is cold red. Yeah. <laughs> this is Def Con 30. Yeah. You feel me? Like yeah. this ain't no just oh yeah, dub and tep. They I every time I see him talk about it online, because I ain't talking no more. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm done. I ain't got nothing to say to these cats. But I'm saying it in interviews. You wanna see what I gotta say, watch this. Yeah. But uh there's no way in hell that I would read that status and be chilling, bro. Man, I, I told Doug, I say it all the time, man, the most consistent rappers here is me, you, Doug, and Rome. Every yeah. year we always putting out some shit. Rome slept on, man. Man, Rome. Cold. Indiana Rome criminally slept on. Yeah. When I come back, I can tell you some good stories about that, man. About just, uh, to me, that's another big legend. Yeah. Big legend. Um, and he, it, it's crazy to call them, call all these people legends and they just getting started. Mm -hmm. But this is, I got admiration. A lot of people view me the wrong way. They think I'm a, a, a pinch of what I present is hate. It's not hate. It's, I know that we are all capable of greatness. Mm -hmm. And when I was on stage in front of 1500 people at the Ricky Smiley show at the ambassador and I cussed out the whole audience. And then the, the St. Louis American wrote a whole blog about it, blog about it the next day. And I go to the Lauren Hill concert with my girl at that time, and two chicks walk by and they say, "Dang, why you cuss us out yesterday?" <laughs> <laughs> to me, these I did that a hundred thousand times in so many shows where my, you know, what I'm saying I could have changed my whole situation if I acted right at, the, at some of them shows, but I did it because I was doing it for something greater than myself, man. And I, I, I may not have always had the language. Mm -hmm. To explain it, and I may not have always had the just the the world and the living experiences to put some of it into language for people. Mm -hmm. I just knew how to lead with my heart and how to express myself from from the depths of my soul. Yeah. So, what you're gonna always get from me is just raw honesty. You can get a, a true reflection of where I'm at, and um, I'm I'm trying my best to uh, just uh, relax and not be so. Um, full of self with with the music and full of self with uh projecting how i feel about things on the other people mm -hmm. so um the new music i feel is just gonna be uh us keeping it going dog uh, me and you gotta get something done Most definitely. Uh, we got some crazy stuff done that they ain't heard for real that yeah. uh that, that mob joint um it's just music on the way man it's music yeah. on the way yeah man well hey man thanks for coming through love man it's an honor. Love. And uh, we I'm happy to be here, man. You yeah, know what I'm man. saying? I get to be on Bodine's show. You feel me? <laughs> so, man, thanks. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, be on the lookout for Tef's, you know what I'm saying, new new music. Check out that wartime. Yeah, uh, man. Check out the new blog spot. What's, what's uh, called again? Boycottx.org. If you want to make some money and you consider yourself a writer, stop giving your content away to Mark Zuckerberg for free. Uh, if you're tired of the CEO dancing in the videos, <laughs> <laughs> come to death row, baby. Hell yeah, man. STL versus everybody. We'll see you next week. Yeah, yeah. Rest in peace, Nip.